We're getting there. And I'll try to do this one, Dr. Gardner. Okay, you can hallucinate through the, the pixelation here. There we yeah, go. Uh, from low power, it seems like there's this really dense inflammatory infiltrate that seems to be just hugging around the lobules of the fat. The, the septae look somewhat involved as well. Yeah. And at, at medium power, it almost it almost looks like these cells are highly pleomorphic or there's some space in between. It's not as dark as I would think if it were just pure lymphocytes. And then at higher power, we see this sort of rimming effect around the fat lobules. And I don't really see much fat necrosis. And I don't really see um, arabesque patterns. I don't really see uh, hyalinization. And I think if you look at these lymphocytes, they're really pleomorphic and atypical. Some of them seem to be just strangling the individual lobules. Yeah, yeah. Each individual adipocyte, right, is like wrapped by by these hyperchromatic atypical lymphocytes. Right. Very good. So what is the diagnosis here? It was the subcutaneous paniculitis, like T-cell lymphoma. That's right. So very good. So this is subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma or subcutaneous paniculitic T-cell lymphoma. And it is an important pattern to recognize, uh, like uh, we, we talked about earlier in the video, that this is a pattern that can overlap pretty closely sometimes with uh, lupus profundus or lupus paniculitis. And in some patients that have subcutaneous paniculitic alpha beta T-cell lymphoma, they actually have actual lupus and also have the lymphoma. So it, it becomes a little bit of a complicated problem sometimes to sort this out. And I will read you an excerpt from this really great book in a minute about um, how to sort this out. But the classic findings, that you, like you said, you have a dense lymphocyte infiltrate. And ideally, you like to see atypical lymphocytes. I have a hard time, unless the lymphocytes are dramatically atypical, I often have a hard time determining lymphocyte atypia because I think it's kind of subtle. But I do think that even for me, um, who I think admittedly I struggle with this sometimes, these look really hyperchromatic. They look very dark and big, right? And then, like you said, they are rimming. This is the classic finding. They are rimming and wrapping around individual fat cells are totally encased in these atypical lymphocytes. So that rimming of atypical hyperchromatic lymphs around individual fat cells is the classic buzzword finding for subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma. You may also have cells, like this might be one, that are uh, that are like a histiocyte with, with, with little fragments of karyorectic debris in them that are called beanbag cells. So you often have karyorexic and karyorexis and nuclear debris, and sometimes the histiocytes will like eat that debris up and you'll see little fragments inside a histiocyte. I don't know if that's the best example, but that's kind of like a, giving me that feeling. It gives beanbag cell or it's giving beanbag cell, as I think maybe the kids would say. Maybe that's what like the gen, the gen alphas when they're derm paths, that's what they'll say. Or they'll be like, it's giving AI, please do the job for me. I don't know. We'll see what the future holds. Sorry, if you're gen alpha watching this, I apologize. I'm old. Okay. I'm an elder millennial. And then, uh, okay. So that's the classic finding there. And then I feel like, uh, morphology wise, the things that help me sort this out from lupus paniculitis, although in real life, I certainly struggle with this. And I usually will show my colleague, Dr. Junkins Hopkins, who's much more knowledgeable about hematopathology of the skin than I am. But, but things that I find helpful, if I see more of that fat necrosis with really bright pink, red fibrin and hemorrhage, hemorrhage, fibrin, fibrinoid necrosis, wiping out the lobules of fat, I think of lupus paniculitis more than, than paniculitic T-cell lymphoma. If I see lymphoid aggregates with germinal center formation, paniculitis, uh, uh, lupus paniculitis, if we have the dermis and have features of lupus there, that makes me think of lupus paniculitis. Although, like I said, people with lupus can also get the T-cell lymphoma. So, and then if I see more atypia and obvious rimming uh, of the fat cells, then I think more of paniculitis. T cell lymphoma uh, rather than uh, lupus paniculitis. But in real life, it can be challenging. And so, this is a great book. This is called Diagnosis of Cutaneous Lymphoid Infiltrates by Antonio Subtil. And Tony Subtil is a really great uh, educator. I've, I heard him speak, and I was like, it was like, 
oh, I could hear like a choir of angels singing because I was like, I think I can understand this. He just has a really great way of simplifying things. And his book, uh, I'm not paid anything to advertise it. Uh, they did give me a free copy years ago to evaluate, but I think I actually gave that away to my residents and bought another one. So in any case, uh, I just think it's a great book. So you can check it out. It's got great differentials and and how to sort out mimics from each other. So I, it's a it's a thin book and uh, it's just packed full of info. So I just love it. Uh, so here's what he said. Lupus, I'm just going to read it as a quote. Lupus erythematosus paniculitis and subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma may demonstrate significant clinical and histopathologic overlap. In addition, a significant subset of patients with with paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma have a history of autoimmune disease, particularly lupus. And so the differential is challenging, right? So he said a prominent component of CD20 positive B cells, often forming CD21 positive lymphoid follicles, uh, plasma cells highlighted by CD79A and CD138, and plasma cytoid dendritic cells highlighted by CD123 immunostain, as well as the presence of that hyalinized fat necrosis, that fibrin-rich fat necrosis, those things would favor lupus paniculitis over paniculate T-cell lymphoma. And then the things that would favor paniculate T-cell lymphoma are lymphocyte atypia, adipocyte rimming by cytotoxic alpha-beta T-cells, which are usually going to be positive for beta F1, CD3, and the CD8, and TIA1, and then they'll be negative for CD4 and CD56. Okay, so those are the things that will help you for paniculitic alpha beta T cell lymphoma. The other important differential for this is gamma delta T cell lymphoma, which in the past was kind of lumped together with paniculitic T cell lymphoma, but then people realized it behaves very differently. Gamma delta lymphoma is much more aggressive and oftentimes fatal, whereas paniculitis like T cell lymphoma alpha beta type is actually very indolent and has an excellent prognosis. So uh, right around the time I was starting training uh, was when people were starting to realize just before I was was in fellowship, people were starting to realize, hey, these are two different diseases, but the, their appearance on H&E and the fat can look, to my eye, almost identical. Maybe Dr. Junkins Hopkins can tell you some subtle differences, but alpha, beta, and gamma, delta in the fat look very similar, but the staining pattern is different. Uh, I believe that the gamma, delta is going to be CD56 positive, and I think it's four and eight double negative, if I recall. I should have had that pulled up. Uh, yes, here it's right here. Next chapter. It's going to be usually uh, CD3 positive T cells that are negative for CD5, negative for 4, plus or minus for CD8, and then CD56 positive beta F1 negative. So you can use immunostains to sort out this indolent alpha beta paniculitis like T cell from gamma delta. And we no longer call gamma delta paniculitis, like even though it looks just like this, because we don't want any confusion with this. We call that cutaneous gamma delta T cell lymphoma, at least my understanding as of the time of this. I'm sure that they'll the hematopathologist will change the name in the future because you know names evolve and heme path is a complicated and rapidly evolving field. The other thing I actually got to interview Tony subtil that interview is on the american society of dramatic pathology youtube channel so if you want to go see that i asked him some some questions of things i struggle with and one of the things i asked him was how do you sort this out from gamma delta and my recollection of what he told me is that gamma delta usually involves all levels of the skin it involves the subcutis and the dermis and often the epidermis with epidermotropism whereas alpha beta paniculitis like is usually just in the subcutis so i found that helpful now in a case like this it's not going to help us because we only have fat right uh, we don't have any skin to look at, but that that's often gamma delta often has uh, overlying skin involvement, whereas alpha beta doesn't. But all, of course, with those immunostains uh, and the help of uh, your uh, heme path uh, experienced uh, colleagues, uh, hopefully we can sort it out because there isn't a significant difference in prognosis there. All right. So I took 15 cases and I still managed to go 10 minutes over time. Uh, if nothing else, I'm consistent, right? And uh, it's been a pleasure, guys. Thank you for uh, joining us today online and watching. And uh, for my residents and fellows, have a great weekend.